We recruiters sure do love a good list, don't we? There's a list of candidates, list of jobs. Well, in Salesforce, there's multiple different ways to make these kinds of lists. I'm going to show you how on today's episode. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Salesforce for Recruiters. I'm your host, Brad Owens, and I was just like you. I spent 10 plus years in the recruiting world, both external and internal, and I always used to use these various pieces of tech that never really fit what I wish they could do for me. And then I saw Salesforce, and I went, where has this been all my life? So now I've dedicated my career to helping both Salesforce and recruiters understand what this platform can really do for recruiting. And on today's episode, I want to dig into something that I get questions about all the time of I typically, when I want to make a list of candidates or a list of jobs or something like that, I've been relying on making a spreadsheet. What are ways that I can actually do that inside Salesforce? How does it help me do my job better by giving me lists and access to the information that I need when I want to see it? Well, that's what we're going to dig into today. And there's three different ways that you can do this inside Salesforce, what we're going to show today. One, there's list views. Two, there's reports. And three, there's a feature inside the Assemble ATS called Contact List. And we're going to look at all three and go into the, some of the details and differences between those. To make it easier to understand these different types of lists, we're going to dig into an actual Salesforce environment today. And I'm going to click through and show you how all of these different types of views work. And here we are inside my actual Salesforce environment for a fictitious recruiting company by the name of Pacifica. Let's start by talking about list views. And list views are fantastic for when you need quick data access to one particular type of data. And when I say type of data, that could be contacts, that could be jobs, that could be any singular type of item. So for today, we're gonna to talk about our contacts. So to get to our contacts, we'd go th through our quick dropdown right here, and you can see I'm into a view. This is a list view inside of Salesforce, and this view is particularly centered around my recently viewed contacts. And to see all of my other list views, I can hit this drop down arrow right here. And I have any particular type of list view that I wanna see, like people who have birthdays this month, or people that I've added to my system that are new this week. You can see this is filtering down all of my contacts in my system based on filters that I've applied. So for today, let's start with a all contact list view. This is every single contact I have inside my system. And you can see, I can see them 50 at a time and I can see those up to 2000 records, but I can see them 50 at a time. Now what list views are great at are giving you the ability to filter these down to the criteria that you want. So for today, let's filter this list down to those that I can take quick actions on. Like I wanna make a list of everyone that I can call right now today. And to do that, I'm gonna to need to see a list view of only people that we have mobile numbers for. So how would we do that? Well, our list view tools are hidden here under our little cog here. And in our cog, we can create a new one, we can clone what we have, and we can set up different sharing settings to maybe share these with our team, or maybe the filters that we're using here, or even the fields that display across the top. So for today, I'm just gonna clone this list view, and we're gonna call this our contacts with phone. And here's where you can say, do I only need to see this one? Or should all of the people in my team see this? Or just the group of recruiters or just the group of salespeople actually see this list view. So just for today, I'm going to leave it for myself. And you can see here, the first thing that pops up is my filters. What filters do you want to apply to this data? And this is specifically for this one particular type of data. So again, we're dealing with contacts today. So for our contacts with our phone, we want to see all of the contacts that are here, but only the ones that have a phone number. So we need to add a filter. And for this filter, we're going to say that we only want the ones with a mobile number. So now we've got just the ones that have a mobile number. And to pull out those that only have something in this field, we're gonna say a mobile number that is not equal to just a blank value. And to do that, I do two quotations here. So we need people that have a mobile number that is not equal to a blank value. So only those that actually have a mobile number. And I'll click done. And as soon as I save this list view, notice that everyone here now has a mobile number. Now I have a list view of everyone that I can take quick action on and actually call today. So that's how we would go through and create a custom list view for ourselves. And you can think, any particular type of data that you want to pull out from a particular contact or a particular job. For instance, if we wanted to see where people lived, we needed to add a column for that. So I'm gonna close my filters here and I'm gonna edit the fields that I display 
inside of this. So this is where we can select those fields. So now we need to see maybe the city or the country that these people are in. So we'd focus down into this particular contact and we would say a, I think we have it as our mailing city. Yep, so we would add the mailing city to our list view. And now you can see that the visible fields here contains mailing city. We don't need to know who the contact owner is today, so we can remove that from our list by just clicking the back arrow. And now it's no longer in these fields to display. Now I'm gonna save this. And for any contacts that we have a mailing city, you can see they're now here. Some are in Cleveland. So a lot of these are in San Francisco, another one in Cleveland. So you can see I've got a most of my candidates that live in San Francisco. And if I needed to sort this list based on some of these, like if I wanted to see only those that were in Cleveland, followed by all of those that are in San Francisco, now you can see that I can start sorting this list by these features. Or maybe I wanted to sort it so they're all listed under the same account if they all work together. These are different ways that you can start manipulating these list views. And again, this is for quick data access. Now that we have our list view built, let's talk about some of the benefits of using a list view over some of the other types of lists that you can create inside Salesforce. One of the major benefits of list views are the mass actions that you can take based on a list. So you can see here that I have the ability to select any individuals on this type of list that I may want. Or if I had a much smaller view like a uh, recently viewed list right here, I can select all of them. And now I have all of these candidates that have recently viewed ready to go. So for today, let's go back to our contacts with a phone number. And we want to make sure we call all of these people over the next week. So to do that, I'm going to add them to a campaign inside Salesforce. And I have the ability really quickly to just click a button here of add to a campaign. Now I can put these through, hey, this is the script that I'm gonna use this week. This is, these are the phone calls that I'm gonna make. This is giving me the ability to take quick actions on the types of people that are in my list. Or maybe it might be jobs. Here's all the jobs we need to call on this week or leads or whatever you wanna use. It's that ability to take quick actions based on a list view. There's some other things that we can do here. Let's say that we now know that there are 10 candidates that we've called that we need to change their city. We can do that through selecting those candidates that we may need to change, and I'll just kind of move things around here. And now, let's say all of those, I need to update their mailing city. Well, I have that ability when this little pencil icon comes up to change this city to, let's say they all now live in New York. And now, if I were to click Enter, I would only save it for this particular individual, this Luke here. But instead, if I wanted to make sure I update all four of these, now, if I scroll down, you'll see that all of the others that I've selected are ready. I can click apply, and now all four of these, it's giving me a notice that you're gonna change all of these to New York, and that's okay, so we'll click save. And now I've mass updated all of these individuals to be now living in New York. So that's where the list view controls really come into play. So from a list of a particular type, you're now able to take mass actions and you're able to do mass updates on a list view. Another type of feature inside Salesforce that allows you to build different types of lists of data is a report. Now, how does a report differ from a list view? So a report inside of Salesforce gives you the ability to take analysis from a particular type of data. And it can do that not only on just a single type of data like candidates or activities or the stages that people are in, but it gives you the ability to take those actions and do that analysis across objects as well. So if we were looking at just a list of, a, of our contacts, we wouldn't really know what contacts we have in process right now at a job or what contacts we have out on assignment because that looks across two different objects. That looks across our assignment object and our contact object. So to be able to create that type of list view, we're going to need to create a report. And that's what we're gonna go in and do today. So for today, we're going to create a new report that spans across our jobs and our applicants and our contacts. And to do that, we need to create a report. So I've created a report here that has not only our jobs, but our stages and our applicants. And you can see they're all interconnected together because we have to look across all those different objects to create this report. And I'll start that report. Now you can see there's no particular data in here because just like our list view, we have to set up the filters for what's shown in this report. So to do that, we'd go into our filters and we'd say, not just my jobs, I wanna see all of my jobs. And not just this current quarter, I wanna see them across all time. And when I apply and refresh my view here, you can see now we've got some data. 
So we have a report built that's across all these different types of things. So we can see that for this project manager and this healthcare admin and Ian's assistant job and this project manager job, we've got people that are pulling in across all of those different types of things. And just like our list views, we can filter out the people that we want to see on this list and also add the types of fields that we want to see across the top. So for today, we can't really do a whole lot with this because this doesn't tell us who's actually in these stages of these jobs. So we need to add the name of the individual that's actually in these particular roles. So I would go through and I would find the applicant's full name and I'd add it to this list. When I hit refresh, now you can see I've got my applicant's full name, I've got the stage that they're in and the job that they're interviewing for. So now I have the ability to look across objects for this particular type of individual. Now there are other benefits to reports that go beyond just being able to see across different objects. You also have the ability to analyze your data and to be able to share this out with other people on your team. So we're gonna go through both of those use cases today. So we're going to save this report and we'll just call this our job stage demo, which that's what we're doing today. And I'm gonna save it and run this report. So it's given me the ability to, hey, where do you want to actually save this? Who do you wanna share it with? What folders do you want this to be in? These are all things we can go into in, in depth in other episodes. But for today, now we've got a new report built that's job stage demo. And I have a number of different things that I can do now on this report. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to share this out with the rest of our team, and we're going to allow them to subscribe to this particular type of data. So now I have the ability to share this report out maybe weekly with my team. Every Monday, we can now see who is in our particular job stage for this week, who has started a role for this week and we need to follow up with. Those types of things we can report out on and send a subscription to this particular report to individuals on our team. We could send that as a file, we could send it as a link, whatever we might need to do. And then we would save that and send it out to our team. So that's how we can actually subscribe to this data. The other thing that we can then do is build reports. But to be able to, to build a report, you need to have this data grouped by something, right? So in order to see who we have in particular stages or how many people we have in particular stages in our hiring process, we need to group this by those stages. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna edit our report and we're going to group these rows by the stage name. So I'd pull that up, and now my data is grouped by a particular stage name. So when I run this report now, I have the ability to add a chart. And for today, I just wanna see my funnel of candidates and where they exist. So I'm gonna add a chart. I'm gonna create this chart in such a way where I can have it be a funnel. And now you can see when I view this as a funnel, I have the ability to see all of my different candidates and where they're at in my actual candidate funnel. So I can see that I've got eight people in my application stage. I've got four people in internal review and I've made four different placements for this particular series and particular time that I've created this report to show. So now I have the ability to not only summarize my data, but also share it out with my team. And I can do some more analysis on this type of list than it could just in a standard list view. Sometimes inside Salesforce, you don't really have the ability to build a list just ad hoc. So if I wanted to take this five candidates that I've talked to yesterday and add 10 candidates that I talked to a week ago to a particular type of list, because I know they'd be really good admin candidates the next time I get one of those searches that comes up, there's no really good way to do that ad hoc inside Salesforce. So if you have the Assemble Applicant Tracking System, you have the ability to create what are called contact lists, and we're gonna dig into some of those today. Contact lists live right beside all of the other objects inside of Salesforce. You can access those with your dropdown, and here I have the ability to see my contact lists. And you can see that I've got a number of different types of lists, and just like those lists that you saw of contacts that we created earlier on in this episode, you also have the ability to create multiple different contact lists. And when you create a contact list, you have the ability to not only just name it, but also choose what fields you want to display in that contact list. So for today, I've got a few of these built, but just so you know, you can customize these to be however you want them to be and show also the related type of data that you want to see. So we'll cancel out of this and I'm gonna dig into the list that I created earlier for my project managers. So inside the contact lists that are a part of the Assemble Applicant Tracking System, you get a number of different features that you haven't got from either our list views that we saw before or our reports. So here you can see on the left, all the different individuals that I've actually added to this list. So you have the ability when you're inside of Salesforce to add a contact to a particular type of list. 
So for today, I've added all these individuals to my project manager contact list. And I can see at a glance that it's not just a list of people, it's the things that are related to this individual and the details. So I can see on Brian's record here, when I click on it, that I can see all of his particular individual data that's associated to his record and his resume, which I can then start searching for keywords. So if I wanted to see if project's actually in here, I can start searching his resume for keywords. And not only that, I can also see the data that's related to him. So just like we saw in a report where you can see across objects, on our contact list, you have the ability individually to view across objects. So you can see this individual has had this many interviews and we can dig in and see the type of feedback that he's had there. We could see the different offers that we've sent out to this individual. We could see the different placements that we've sent this individual out on and they've worked for us and the amount of money they earned. You know, we can see across objects on a single list. So this is something that you can't do inside Salesforce organically. You have to actually add the assemble applicant tracking system to do this. Not only that, you also have the ability to start filtering down lists. So if I wanted to, in this list, say everyone who has this one particular certification, I wanna see those, and those that live in particular area, and those that also have a phone number on their record, and those that I've placed in the past three months, whatever type of data you then wanna filter this list by, you can do that. So you can start seeing that you can build out a particular type of list and then filter that down to only the data that you wanna see and see the data that's related to that individual. So if you took list views plus reports inside Salesforce and combine them together into one beautiful thing for recruiters to use, it's contact lists. And that only comes from the Assemble Applicant Tracking System. So let's recap then what we saw today. Today, we saw three different ways to view data inside Salesforce in a list type view. We have actual list views that are specific to one particular type of data, so a contact or a job. We saw the ability to create reports that can show you lists of things across objects. So in this case, we showed where you wanted to see candidates and their applicant stage inside a particular job. And then we showed you the feature inside the Assemble Applicant Tracking System called Contact Lists that kind of combines the two into something that's perfect for recruiters to use inside Salesforce. So if you like that kind of content, there is plenty more at salesforceforrecruiters.com. If you've got a particular type of question that you want answered, feel free to send that in to me. It's hello at bradowens.com. I do viewer question episodes all the time, and I'm happy to take your questions. Until next time, I will turn you loose. This is Brad Owens for the Salesforce for Recruiters show. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.